Hi. Um, so I'm a postdoc in the Ratch Lab at the uh, Sloan Kettering Institute. Um, and um, I will be showing you some really cool results of our analysis on the TCGA data, um, where we are trying to take a pan-can view on uh, alternative splicing. So um, let me give you a little bit of a motivation here. So this is a uh, figure from a paper, a nature review paper from 2012. And it shows you how if you are, have alternative splicing, you can have a few genes where, where um, you have um, alternative three prime ends, exon skips, which may change certain domains in the gene and can in fact change the function of the gene. You can switch from having um, pro um, apoptotic to anti-apoptotic functions and um, you can also um, uh, change function from being angiogenic to anti-angiogenic. So there's a, uh, there's a certain motivation to look into these things as potential targets uh, for uh, cancer treatment. So we set out therefore to, um, uh, with the following goals. So we want to identify cancer specific splicing patterns um, based on the TCGA um, RNA-seq data. So we're also interested in identifying variants regulating uh, splicing in the same genes. So trying to find cis associations essentially and then also trying to find um, variants regulating splicing in other cancer genes. Um, and so the TCGA data is particularly suited because it has RNA-seq data and the matching exome data. Um, for the RNA-seq we will find and quantify the splicing events and the exome data does in fact cover enough of the flanking regions into the, intronic, uh, um, into the entrance to actually um, have variant codes there and try to find uh, cis associations. Um, however, there's one problem with this. Um, um, unfortunately, it is, um, the TCGA data has not been uniformly processed and so we set out to do the following and this was a, quite a major effort on our side. We've basically gone back, reanalyzed all of the raw sequencing data. We have gone uh, taken all the exome data and the RNA-seq data and uh, designed our own pipeline um, to remap everything and do a joint variant calling um, using the unified genotyper, but also um, trying to find uh, somatic variants using mutec. Um, and then we have uh, done a splicing quantification using splatter, it's a tool um, developed in the RATCH lab to actually um, find alternative splicing events um, uh, and add towards uh, the annotations of the already known existing splice, uh, splice events. So let me walk you, sorry, this is jumping. Um, let me walk you uh, through, um, through um, our approach of finding new splicing events. So we basically start off uh, with building a splice graph from the known splice annotations. And then using the RNA-seq data, we are trying to find new splice junctions if you have support for, uh, for new events. Um, we will then count the amount of reads supporting, and this is an example of an exon skip, so in this case, we will try to find uh, the reads supporting this alternative exon and then basically normalize it across uh, the reads uh, covering the whole region. And this gives us something we call um, a splicing index or the percent spliced in. And so here you can see an overview of, um, of our efforts. Um, on the very left, you can, on the very left, you can see that um, these are um, already annotated splice events um, uh, broken down to, to the different types. Um, here is what we have filtered down to. Um, this, uh, this is actually a very stringent filter towards uh, a set of events we have high confidence in based on the data we have seen. And uh, this is what we have generated using Splatter, again, filtered with the same thresholds, um, adding a lot of uh, new splicing events towards the already existing annotation. Um, and so in order to find cancer-specific splicing events, you can see here a little bit of a map where we have uh, broken down uh, the splicing events into um, specific tumor types and sorted them. So um, each color here represents a little bit of the fraction of, um, of samples which support a specific exon skip. And, um, and on the left you can see um, a comparison to whether we see that particular event in the ENCODE data or in the amount of um, RNA-seq data, in the normal RNA-seq data available from the TCGA. Unfortunately, there's not much of the match normals available, so uh, you have to take this with a sort of grain, but you can definitely see a bunch of uh, cancer-specific, in some cases possibly tissue-specific events of alternative splicing. Um, 
So, um, so basically, this, this gets us to our first goal. So we basically have gone uh, and analyzed um, the RNA-seq splicing events. We detected new splicing events that occur frequently in specific cancer type. Of course, we still need some more independent validation. Um, but they are very interesting um, cases which uh, may be suited for potential targets, uh, as potential targets for treatment. So let me go to the next goal, which is trying to take a statistical genetics view on um, finding variants associated with um, uh, alternative splicing. Here you can see on the left what people have done so far in the statistical genetics field and doing QTL analysis on um, next generation sequencing data, with GeoVad as being one of the most recent ones. But if you're looking on the right, um, different colors represent the heterogeneity in the cancer, the different cancer types, but you have quite a large data set available already to do this type of analysis. Um, so it, it is perfectly suited to understand tissue and cancer specific, uh, specificity of splicing as well as finding trans association, which has been very limitedly possible um, due to the lack of power in, uh, in previous projects. However, there's a problem if you're doing this on, on this type of data. Of course, it's noisier, you have heterogeneity, you have purity of the samples, and the many rare events due to the somatic mutations definitely cause a problem. I won't be talking much about rare variant analysis. Uh, we have done this as well. Come talk to me if you're interested in this. Um, but I want to focus here more on the common variant analysis where we're basically taking a, the, uh, a typical linear regression approach, but uh, we're going a step further and uh, doing something which is called a linear mixed model. So you're basically just looking for correlation between an exon skip here and the a variant you observe in your data. Um, but what often is a problem is uh, something we call population structure, where you, uh, your data set is composed out of uh, patients from different populations, and you have a lot of population-specific variants. And if you're doing a PCA on the, uh, SNP, uh, on the germline data, you can see how your population nicely separates. Um, doing this on the somatic variants, actually, you don't get that type of separation. But nevertheless, the structure in cancer um, requires you to actually account for it. And if you're actually now coloring this PCA based on cancer types, you can see a little bit better how your cancer types cluster based on the somatic variants, which is quite interesting, and we believe that it is necessary to account for this in doing an uh, association analysis. So let me uh, show you an example here. This is a cis association in SNRP-C. It, uh, it generates a protein which is essential for uh, the formation of the spliceosome. So this is why it's particularly interesting. On the bottom here, you can see the, um, you can see the, um, uh, the gene structure with the three exons. This is the exon which is being skipped. You can see on the top right the different splice indices. You can see how the inclusion of the exon goes down uh, from the alter, uh, uh, or respectively up from the reference to the alternate allele. This is our your sample sizes we have in the TCGA data. And here you can see, the, uh, on the left you can see the p-values, right? So you see the, the SNPs and the associated p-values. Each color represents a cancer type here. And you can see how you have a nice cis association right uh, around the splice junction, which is associated with the change in, um, uh, uh, with the change in um, using this, uh, in the exon usage for, uh, for the data we have seen. And so if you're actually doing this across um, multiple cancer types, um, you get uh, actually to this nice plot here. So this is um, basically just a plot on uh, a set of cancer census genes. And uh, we have tried to indicate here on the left the different cancer types. And each blue dot marks, uh, marks um, a cis association within the cancer type of a particular gene. So this is particularly remarkable, MMAB, which ref where we can replicate the cis association in each of the uh, cancer types, just using that subset of samples. On the right side, you can see this on um, uh, doing the same thing on um, uh, uh, splicing-related genes. You can see here some of the interesting ones, like RBM25. And uh, we can replicate at, uh, a lot of these cis associations over um, um, uh, across different cancer types. So this is all across 5% FDR, just um, to show. So um, we also look at uh, trans association, and uh, this is a little bit of an example. This is uh, an interesting gene. It's directly um, related to, um, um, uh, to P53-mediated apoptosis, right? And uh, we find, if you're looking actually at trans association at the same FDR threshold of 5%, um, we find various other factors um, connected to this, uh, um, to alternative splicing in this gene. Um, 
And here you can see, um, uh, obviously the loop to itself indicate a cis association. Uh, and you can see we found some other links uh, in, in the data sets uh, supporting several trans associations. And, we have, um, and um, this is a subset of what we have found so far. Um, uh, we find several trans associations um, uh, in various genes. Of course, most of them will be this association. It's simply where you have the most power for and most of the signal is coming from that. Um, and we certainly don't believe that all of them are right and they definitely need, still need some confirmation. There's a certain error rate associated with it, but the truth will probably be lying somewhere in the middle. Um, so let me go to conclusions. Um, so basically we have developed a new resource for uh, novel and known alternative splice events. Um, so we will try to make this available to the community as soon as we can. Um, we identified cancer-specific isoforms that appear rarely expressed. You have seen that in the heat map. We have a slightly updated version now where we're actually accounting for, um, uh, for the existence of, of tissue specificity. Um, so we performed common variant associations to map splicing phenotypes. And um, the sample size in TCJ um, enables us to detect uh, a bunch of trans associations. Certainly, again, right, not all of them may be functional, but um, uh, may be correct, but some of them certainly will. And so we're definitely looking further into um, that some of them still need some validation. And again, right, and particularly in trans, since they are usually hard to find, and there certainly may be some spurious associations. Um, so let me acknowledge uh, particularly um, this group which has been working with me on this project. Um, uh, particularly, um, I want to emphasize um, uh, Andre here. Uh, he has been particularly helpful in, um, the next in handling the next generation sequencing data. We have been working with this 3,000 sample. It has been a, a huge amount of work. It's a relatively small group for this uh, scale of a project. And with that, uh, thank you and I'm taking questions. And two questions. Uh, one is, do you see what's the frequency or prevalence of mm, those uh, cancer-specific splicing? In other words, do you have see a small group of genes that has high enough frequency in tumor that could be a no, novel therapeutic target? The second question is, oh, oh. is <laughs> uh, regarding, you know, do you, did you do any association with somatic mutations, especially those splicing song, you know, yeah. machinery? So, um, yeah, these are two questions. So first, um, we're definitely looking into trying to filter down these events. Right now, we are just looking at a subset of genes which seems to be um, cancer slash tissue specific. We're trying to particularly sort out what's tissue specific and what's cancer specific using the normal data available. Um, towards doing somatic variant association, uh, we are working on doing a rare variant association using the somatic SNPs, but we have also associated all the common somatic variants available in the data set. So there's a certain frequency threshold where you just have to cut off, otherwise you're just increasing the amount of spurious associations you get. But for the common somatic, it's already available and the rare variant is uh, currently uh, in progress. So I think on your first slide you talk about uh, recalling all the somatic mutations as well as the splicing events um, using the same pe uh, pipeline pan cancer. So how important in your opinion is that um, versus a lot of people that are using individual calls from different working groups? It depends on what you want to do. We, we particularly are interested in also looking across cancer types. And if you're doing that and using um, uh, QCs, which are done separately for each cancer type, and you're looking across various cancer types, there's definitely a difference, particularly if you're looking at mutation calls, you can sometimes see that, uh, that there's an increase of calls in certain, uh, in certain cancer types. For example, all your lung cancers are, are hypermutators, right? And so sometimes the thresholds have been more stringent, but you want to have sort of uniform thresholds to actually analyze this. So, so I think for that type of analysis, it's important. It's not necessary for any type of analysis. It really depends on what you do. And are you guys going to make the, those mutation calls available? We can make the somatic variant calls available. The germline calls, however, is uh, yeah. HIPAA, right? So. Okay, our next speaker is uh, Dmitry Gardenian from uh, NIEHS, and he will uh, talk to us about pan-cancer analysis of apobec mutagenesis. 